Again, thank you, Blake. Thank you, Stacy Smith. Thank you, Kevin Chambliss for the program. Yeah, I don't even know when it was, but it seems like ages ago, I, I wrote up an Illuminate uh, proposal for a Society of Fellows, much like they have at uh, Princeton, uh, Michigan, uh, some other notable institutions. And, you know, it's recruiting cohorts of, of postdoctoral fellows to really advance R1. And, uh, but more importantly, and that's kind of my punchline, I'm just gonna start by saying my punchline is that our job here is um, to get you a job, okay? We talk about how postdocs are contributing to our R1 metrics, but the point of a postdoc um, is continued training so as to place you in a position that you prefer, okay? So with that said, I want to be very clear about something first. I didn't have a postdoc. I, I'm a first gen student, uh, born and raised on south, south side of Chicago. If you've seen the movie Caddyshack, that golf scholarship, a caddy scholarship is real. I got it and it paid my way. And cause my dad was an electrician, mom, a homemaker. Um, I wasn't given other options and was very fortunate to have a great series of mentors that took me through uh, undergrad and then grad school at various places. Um, it means that my perspective may be a little bit different from others. Um, as I'm viewing individuals that I work with, like graduate students and postdoctoral fellows, as junior colleagues or uh, equal colleagues in a lot of cases. So, um, I think it influences our outcome, our dynamics, and ultimately the deliverables that both parties, uh, mentor and advisor are, advisee are, are interested in accomplishing. So that said, again, I didn't have a postdoc. Um, I published a lot in grad school because I, I went into public health first, which meant that I had a bunch of data besides my dissertation. So I had a bunch of pubs, which meant I was able to walk into a tenure track position at Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Milwaukee in 2004. And, uh, I walked in with absolutely no teaching experience. So I didn't even TA. Okay. So that meant my transition into tenure track was, um, difficult at first and is different from what's going to be presumably your tra transition. I spent a lot of time, you know, developing syllabi and, and I realized that you're not here right now to specifically develop pedagogical skills, but I'm hopeful that that's one of the things that you'll, you'll take away from this experience. Um, I moved around several institutions and during my time, uh, was able to work with a number of, of wonderful people. I'm currently mentoring my fifth postdoctoral fellow. Uh, he's not here right now because he's actually at the hospital. Uh, his wife is giving birth today. So um, yay for them. So I'm just gonna reflect on what I think are uh, responsibilities really of, of mentors and advisees. Okay, because that's been my perspective. Again, um, what are some of the goals? I work in evolutionary biology of infectious diseases. So I kind of think of, you know, uh, uh, interactions between organisms and, you know, what are ultimately their goals. The goals of the mentor may not be the same as, as the advisee. So uh, we've got to be really clear about this. The purpose of when I think of a postdoc, so what I try to communicate to them is that, that it, you're here for a number of different reasons, okay? Maybe uh, the job market for what you particularly do right now is really, really bad compared to other times. Um, it's probably only going to get worse for a little while at least because of COVID. But um, it means that, you know, you need a transition experience between graduate school and let's just assume tenure track. And I realized that only about 52 percent ish, according to a recent study uh, of, of graduate students and postdocs actually want to go into the academy. 
but you know it gives you an opportunity to publish research from your dissertation while not necessarily being burdened with uh, a heavy teaching load that may come with your first tenure track job. Importantly, uh, the purpose of all this is to gain uh, new experience and new skills. Okay, you don't want to. I would. I would never. You know. That's why you. You don't take a postdoc with your with your PhD advisor, usually. Okay, because you you're you're there to learn something new. It could be a new lab skill, it could be more experience in granting. But I think it's really important to realize that you're there. You're you're not a glorified lab tech. Okay, uh, you are a scholar that is supposed to operate as a team at this point. Um, it is an opportunity for you to work with a scholar that is other than your PhD advisor or advisory committee. And that's really important when it comes to uh, developing your own career trajectory. And it will come up during your tenure evaluation to show how you've developed kind of independently as a scholar, as opposed to your advisor's laboratory group. Uh, from my perspective, I think it's really important to take the opportunity to begin working on a completely new project. So it might be related to your discipline or, or even not just, you know, it could be in the same realm, but it would show that you not only have uh, depth, but also breadth within your field. It'll give you uh, experience in mentoring graduate students and teaching to a certain degree. Uh, I'm not requiring my postdoc to teach, but there will be some pedagogical training involved uh, where applicable and some syllabi to be developed so that he can uh, place himself into a tenure track if that's what he continues to want. I'll tell you that um, he was offered a, an assistant professorship. He just graduated from uh, Texas Christian Psychology I was offered a, a tenure track at Oklahoma State, but turned it down uh, to come here for three years. So for, for all of the aforementioned reasons. I think uh, you should have certain expectations of your experience here and your mentors should have certain expectations of both themselves and you. Expectations for a postdoc might be something like you, you should clearly communicate with your mentor about your needs. Okay, so everybody knows we're not mind readers or anything like that. Um, so we need to know what you need to develop as a researcher. And a lot, a big part of that includes a very clear professional development plan. So what things do you want to accomplish while you're here? And not just in broad 30,000 feet general terms, okay? So, you know, I want to have X number of pubs and grants. I want to uh, learn a new lab skill, flow cytometry. I want to learn R, the statistical package. Okay, be specific here and include a timeline for this because it's important for your mentor to uh, hold you accountable and, and for you to hold uh, she or he accountable. It's important to interact outside of your research group. That's kind of why I, I propose that Society of Fellows so that, that you have a group uh, of co-patriots that you can um, bounce ideas off of. You're not here to only work within your laboratory group. Okay. And really importantly too, you should not be in a hurry to leave. Uh, I got offered a postdoc at the CDC, but again, I took it for a tenure track because I was opportunistic at the time. But reflecting back on it, um, I wouldn't change anything, I'll tell you that. And that's because, you know, it might have changed the outcome that I have four great kids. So I wouldn't change anything. But um, thinking back, you know, I, I passed up a, a decent opportunity there where I could have accomplished uh, things that I mentioned before. Um, I have a lot of undergrads that volunteer in my lab. <clears throat> we do uh, immunological biomarkers associated with a number of different infectious diseases, and uh, they want the lab experience because they want to go to you know medical school. And and I tell them that it's fine. I just don't take seniors because by the time they're done training them, uh, they're leaving, 
And so I kind of feel the same way about postdocs. I, I wouldn't necessarily take uh, an individual. I, I think it would be a disservice to them and me if, for example, I, um, I took one who really knew that they were only in this for one year, okay? Uh, minimum two years. And I think it's fantastic that we've got, uh, you know, semi-guaranteed funding for three years, depending on performance, of course. Um, but that's a great opportunity, so don't, don't be in a hurry. Um, expectations of advisors are equally important, if not more. So here, we have to have a clear mentorship plan. And uh, before Jeff uh, signed anything with me, we exchanged his professional development plan and my um, mentorship plan. So what he wanted out of this experience and what I wanted out of this experience. And this is a, a time for for mentors to outline our specific goals here, okay? Like, Jeff, you need to uh, put in two external grant applications a year and four paper submissions. It'd be as specific as that. Um, you, know, you need to mentor the grad and undergrad students. We're running the Waco COVID survey, which is a serological surveillance of SARS-CoV-2 virus in McLennan County. And he's basically almost taken over that project. It, it wasn't intentional. It kind of evolved uh, as an emergency response more than anything. But um, it's giving training in something he certainly hasn't done before, including really large group management. Um, uh, strength in oral presentation skills. So, uh, you know, things that I would, I would say, these are my expectations of you, and I think these are really important. I think it's also really, really, really important that mentors provide the resources to get these things done. Uh, we've been provided with very generous stipend from the uh, Office of the Vice Provost for Research. Um, but I, I believe that, that, that we have a responsibility as mentors to provide, you know, it's not just access to space or anything like that, but, you know, I have built into my contract with him that he gets a certain amount of money to do independent research projects, a certain amount of money to travel to conferences. And um, I think that's really important and something to think about. So um, most importantly, again, going back to the main point that I started with, uh, our goal as mentors is to train people, you presumably as advisees, to increase your likelihood of getting a job, okay? And, and I think it's really important to view it like this because it, it, it'll make your, uh, your goal appreciation greater and it will, uh, I think, facilitate your collaboration in, in a variety of ways. Because again, um, it, I, I think we're getting away from the old school ivory tower dominance hierarchy things and we need to focus on you know the we're we're just group collaborators at this point and, and we're really supporting each other because you can't have one without the other right uh that's all i prepared in terms of speaking points but i'm happy to take any questions point number one you can't start the process too early Okay, you wait till your last year in graduate school and you're not gonna find something in time, right? You might then choose to stay behind in your program for an extra year and well, that might sound good temporarily, you know, it, it adds to the metrics of time to degree and all that kind of stuff that other people think are important. Um, definitely uh, check out the, the Postdoc Association website, the, the official one, national, as well as uh, uh, the one here at Baylor for information on uh, job advertisements. So in psych, there's going to be a lot of job wikis that are going to be posting those, those postdocs. Now, when I was hunting, um, honestly, until just a few years ago, I'd be comfortable saying that most of these are acquired via word of mouth, you know? Uh, well, I heard that there's this available and, and, you know, so a lot of that was, the job of the mentor to, to to search into her his social networks of of, of um, collaborators and see if hey do you have a, a spot coming up so that's really not efficient but obviously we've got all these wiki boards now that um, can can help the process uh, when I was doing it also originally 
know, we're talking about, there's nothing online. And this, anyway, that's not that long ago, 2004. Very little was online at the time uh, about these things. So, um, you know, like I found out about the CDC one through a magazine, like Science Mag or something like that. Um, first gen resources. So definitely check out the website here on campus called First in Line. And they are not just a resource to undergraduate students that most people think, but they are a resource to all students. Um, and I mean, a resource to us faculty that, that are in these positions. So yeah, I, I would, I would check that out. And I just dropped a link into the chat box to that National Postdoc Association job search board. Uh, that is a great resource to check out. First, I would, when I, if, if I was out searching for a postdoc, I'd be very clear what, with my potential mentors, what my goal is. Okay. So, you know, I asked Jeff, do you want to, is your ultimate goal to work in the academy, to be tenure track? And it is, unless he changes his mind, which is fine. Um, but that is obviously going to influence the, the things that I prioritize for both him and I. So, you know, one of the main purposes of this postdoc program here is to increase our R1 metrics. So most importantly, it's going to be granting, right? And so I will have certain granting expectations for him. And if he wasn't going into the academy, if he wanted to go into, I don't know, private industry, business, nonprofit, military, science, whatever, for one, I probably wouldn't have taken him because I wouldn't be the right advisor. That would have been selfish of me, okay? Because there's only certain things that I can train him to do. And so you gotta be clear about this up front. But um, yes, I, so I recently, well, it's, it's, it's I'd say at least uh, three quarters of the way through the process right now of approval for our, um, global health PhD program in anthropology. And it is based on the idea that simply put, a lot of our fields are saturated. You know, the job prospects are decreasing, which means, you know, it's, it's a role of escalation between host and parasite here or, or, or applicant and job, right? There are just, there's we, an overwhelming number of overqualified individuals now. So making individuals stand out and different and, and marketable to different positions is really, really important. So in, in our program, we require a lot of stats, a lot of stats. And so I would require that too, personally, of, of, of anybody under uh, my mentorship. Um, management and communication is a specific set of electives in our PhD proposal. And, you know, it's going to be important for any postdoc as well. I, I did reference, you know, managing that large project. So depending on what they want to do, you know, um, uh, project design, implementation, management, evaluation, all of those things. Um, communications, you know, it, it, they could be needing specialization in health communication, for example. Um, so I would be particularly cognizant to what the goals of the applicant are, you know, at the application stage, not while they're, you know, surprise, this is actually what I want to do, you know, a year in, because that doesn't do either party much justice. Yeah, you can't be expected to do this without direction, right? So um, for me, it means that even before I, I hired Jeff on, I have a list, I've had a list going of, of, of grants that I want to work on, projects that I want to work on, and then where we would uh, presumably apply for funding. And, you know, I ran that by him 
beforehand and, and to, to say, you know, the, these are my goals. How do you think you would fit in in these? And so uh, we've already put out, you know, three applications, um, but they're from private funding. It's for the COVID project that I mentioned. So it's a little bit different. It's not like the big applications for, for federal funding or anything like that. But um, obviously there's a, a lot of assistance that can be provided through the Office of the Vice Provost of Research on grant development. There's an increasing amount. Uh, Dr. Stacy Smith would, would be the best reference for that. Okay. Um, you know, how, how to identify these grants, um, uh, what is your expectation for uh, your contribution to them? Because I, I was clear with Jeff, you know, these are the ones I'm going to be PI on. These are the ones that you're going to be PI on. And, and you know, just, just being clear about that and, and having a very specific timeline too, I think is really, really important here um, to not just say these are the ones we're going to do, but this is the order in which we're going to do them. These are the deadlines for the RFPs. You know, uh, there's an R15 deadline uh, for NIH in just a few weeks. So that's, you know, what we're aiming for right now. So um, I'm the director of research development for the university. In our office, we often host grant writing workshops. Uh, you know, we've had kind of an interruption because of COVID. But graduate students and postdocs are allowed to attend. When I was getting my PhD at a and we had to pay $650 to attend. Um, faculty did too, but it's free. Um, you know, the, this one's been available. It's been opened up. When I got here, I, I thought, the same thing as Dr. Nielenbein, that we needed to make sure that we're preparing our, you know, our postdocs and our grad students and how to do that because they're often helping write grants. And so um, it's been available and we don't have a marketing program anymore. And our postdoc office is like two months old. So uh, we realized that there was a big need, uh, like you mentioned. Uh, so I'll look and see, you know, Peg, we usually outsource with Peg Atkinson. She comes in and does workshops with us. And she comes usually the first week in January and then in March. But we had, you know, we had to cancel the March one because of COVID. And we're looking at maybe doing an online class uh, in January. And as Stacy mentioned, uh, we, we will be communicating that with postdocs uh, when those are happening, whether they're in person or virtual. So you'll definitely, uh, you'll definitely be aware the next time those come around. Thank you all again for, uh, for coming, and I uh, hope you have a great rest of your day.